They've done loads and loads of work on the final brake run for the ride to the point where literally as I'm speaking right now, a crane is putting in the very final bit of brake run um, to connect it to the station. Yo, what is going on guys? My name is Jack Silkstone and welcome back to yet another Project Exodus slash Hyperia construction update. That's right, once again today I'm here at Fort Park on the construction site for the UK's tallest roller coaster. Now currently the site is very muddy. With it being winter, obviously we've had quite a bit of rain and wind recently. So the site is insanely muddy and I really appreciate all of the suggestions in my last video for some more appropriate footwear. So I'm currently rocking just some standard like steel toe cap boots. I don't know if they're getting into frame there. Um, but yeah, I appreciate all of the suggestions. I'm looking into getting some better like wellies um, so I can move about the site a little bit better. But yeah, talking of the site, I'm currently starting this video down the lower end of the construction site. I'm currently using Hyperia as a tripod. Like this is a little bit mad. Let me take a picture of this to show you guys. It's quite funny. There you go. It's not every day you get to use a roller coaster as a tripod, is it? But yeah, I'm currently stood underneath the insane twist element of this ride. Let me turn the camera around for you all. Look at that, it's absolutely gorgeous. And the reason I'm starting down this lower end of the site is because to be honest, they're pretty much all done down here. As I said in the last episode, soon they'll start work on like landscaping this area. But in terms of like actual coaster construction, this area has pretty much been ticked off, which is fantastic news. And yeah, the main updates that I have to share with you today all take place down at that lower end of the site. Over the past few days, and especially today, they've done loads and loads of work on the final brake run for the ride to the point where, literally as I'm speaking right now, a crane is putting in the very final bit of brake run um, to connect it to the station. And I'm also gonna be discussing what the next stage of this project is gonna be. I spoke to Wayne, the head of b &E services here on site, and he told me exactly where the different teams here on site are gonna be focusing their efforts um, once this final break run section is done. So yeah, very exciting episode today. Let's make our way back towards the start of the site. Come on. So if you watched my previous construction update from here on site, you'll know that the team that are putting up the roller coaster itself have most recently been working on the very final part of this ride, um, where you go around this final curve into the airtime hill and eventually into the brake run. So let me show you on the progress that we've had today. I'm, I do apologize, guys. I would have loved to have headed down um, that part of the site, um, obviously where Loggers Leap's second lift hill used to stand. How crazy is that? That this coaster literally lines up with where Loggers Leap's second lift hill once was. Um, yeah, I was going to head around there, but obviously this area used to be entirely lake. This is part of the area that they filled in. Um, and it is ridiculously muddy. Just look at the shoes. So I'm going to do it for this side of the little lake um, that still remains. But yeah, you still get an amazing view of all of the work that has taken place today. So yeah, as I said, this is the very final part of the ride. Essentially, you're going to come from this little splashdown bit, which I will get a cooler view of once I move further down the site. Um, you're going to come up out of that, over these supports that I'm literally standing under right now. Eventually, you'll join up with this little curve of track here. You'll come round into this airtime hill, and then the brakes will hit at this point. You can see um, where those brakes are right there. And then, yeah, you'll be slowed down during this period, and you'll eventually make your way back into the ride station just down there. As I've said before, when this um, construction team are working on some of the lower heights, they're able to do it so quickly because obviously they don't need a massive cherry picker to get to the high points like they did um, with the big twist element and like they will have to do when they eventually put up the lift hill. Um, but yeah, when they're working at these smaller heights, they're able to do a lot of their work with just a crane and um, just like a smaller kind of cherry picker 
And yeah, that basically allows them to race through all of these lower pieces of construction. Obviously, it will massively, massively slow down once they start getting up to these uh, points of the ride, which will be over 200 foot in this part of the sky. And I believe tomorrow, even though it's the weekend, as I say, this team are insane. They're constantly working on this ride, trying to get it ready um, for when it's due to open in 2024. Um, but yeah, tomorrow they're going to be working on putting up all of the um, kind of catwalks up the side of the brake run. Because on roller coasters, when there is like a brake run or a block section, there are always catwalks walk so that just in case the ride breaks down or anything they can safely evacuate guests or in case any engineers need to get to that specific part of the ride they're able to kind of walk uh, alongside it and do anything that they need to do so yeah all of those catwalks that i've shown before in the, the staff area they're going to be moved over to site and apparently they're going to be going up tomorrow so yes yeah, keep an eye out for that in the next update but yeah, I think that's about all I can show you from this kind of distance. I'm gonna make my way into this middle area, which is somewhere I haven't been for ages in these construction updates. So as I said, I'm currently stood in an area of the site that I've kind of avoided quite a bit over the past few months because it's been a very heavily constructed area where they've been kind of preparing and putting in all of the foundations um, in this part of the site. But yeah, as you can see behind me, loads and loads of work has been done on the station over the past week. We now have a roof on that station, which is great to see. And yeah, they're still just putting in this very final bit of the brake run right there. And yeah, it's also very exciting finally seeing some stairs finally go into place. So yeah, this is exactly where we're gonna be heading up into the station, ready for our first ever ride on Hyperia. But yeah, in terms of upcoming progress here on site, as I've said many times over these updates, there are multiple different teams working here on site to ultimately bring Hyperia to life. You've got B&E who have been here for ages and ages. You've got J&O who have been here since the very start. Those are the ones that were knocking down um, Old Town back in like January time. Um, then you've got the team that are actually putting up the coaster. But because there are so many teams working here on site, it means that multiple different things can be happening at once. And as I said, soon we'll be having landscaping starting down that lower end of the site. But yeah, arguably the most exciting visual construction that happens here on site is of course the coaster itself going up. And yeah, I was just talking to Wayne, um, the head of B&E here on site, and he was telling me that once they've done all of this section and they put up the catwalks and everything, their next um, kind of area that they're gonna be focusing on is exactly where I'm standing. They're gonna be putting up this massive support structure that's in this part of the site. And yeah, this is obviously a major, major point of a site. It's gonna reach a height that's pretty much level with this 165 um, twist just down that lower end of the site. It's a massive part of the ride. Um, the coaster comes into this part of the um, site multiple times. So this support structure holds up different points of the ride. And yeah, that is why these supports just behind me went up in my last um, construction update. That is kind of the start of this massive, massive piece of construction that they're gonna be focusing on next. So yeah, that's gonna look absolutely amazing in these updates, seeing this massive structure come to life. So yeah, once again, it's just gonna help put into perspective how big this thing is gonna be. Wayne was saying that he's expecting the coaster construction crew to be here until roughly kind of January time. Um, and at that point, they'll obviously kind of head off, they'll leave, um, and Wayne and his team will then kind of focus on putting in the kind of landscaping side of things, like the queue line, the rides plaza, and all of that. And he actually pointed out something just below where the camera is right now, which is quite cool. So yeah, this blue line right here is apparently their kind of level point. So that is gonna be the level that you're standing on in the queue line, in the plaza, and all of that. So yeah, that's really cool to see. He said it's kind of level with the top of these um, foundation points. 
So yeah, that's going to be B&E's job once the main kind of coast of construction is complete. They're basically going to turn all of this mud and um, dirt and gravel into a nice presentable plaza and queue line. So yeah, it's all very exciting. Obviously that won't be taking place until, as I said, around January time. It's so weird to think that literally where my camera was resting just then, this is the base of the lift hill. So over the next few months, we're gonna be looking up exactly from this point to a structure that is 236 feet tall. So, so exciting, isn't it? But yeah, I'm gonna leave this update right here. As always, thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for even more Hyperia updates coming out over this winter period. And otherwise, my name is Jack Silkstone. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.